Here's God Almighty coming to be born as a human being. That means he has to sit nine months in his mother's womb. I mean, here's God, one of the creators, you know, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. So let me share something with you. Let me ask you this. We're going to do a couple of biblical questions. When the uh, wise man showed up, was Jesus in a manger or was he in a house? Yeah, because the wise men, when they got there, it was two to three years later after Jesus was born. So oftentimes when we see the manger, we see the wise men there. I call them the three wise guys, you know, and we see them there. But they didn't come for about two and a half to three years later. Remember, they kind of wandered around a little bit and then Herod asked them, you know, who's his king? Who's his king? Herod was really crazy. In fact, what... Herod, there were many Herods, but this one particular Herod was loony, you know, completely berserk. And he thought, I want to be the king, so I'm not going to have any other kings. So he went about doing the devil's business and trying to kill all of the children, hoping that he will get this king of the Jews. Amen. So, yeah, you got that question right. Two and a half to three years later, let me ask you, how, here's one, I threw this one out on the, the news feed, um, but I wanted to ask you, how did you, Mary, who had no relationship with Joseph, in other words, she did not have any sex before, before marriage, how was she able to get the word of God into her womb? Think about, wait a minute, we know it's by the Holy Spirit, but she had to do something. Can you remember what she did? She did all of those things. She, she, first of all, agreed. She wondered about the angel, because angels are about seven foot tall. Not all of them have wings. Okay, so don't be thinking, <laughs> like, you know, okay? They, most of them don't, you know. They, you know, cherubim, maybe seraphim, but... <laughs> anyway, okay. So how did she get the word of God from the angel's words... To get the word of God in her womb and have it take on flesh. He overshadowed her, but no sex involved. And that's good. I'm not going to throw that away. And the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, right? But I'm looking for something. My mom, my wife knows. Yeah, yeah my, she, no, I'm sorry. My wife knows. My mom's in heaven going, I know, I know. I just could see my mom up there. I know. Remember, Grandma? I know. You know she believed in her heart. And she said, be it done unto me according to your word. And when she said that, the word came right on into her heart and then down into her womb. And it began to take on flesh. That's the miracle of, of the birth of Christ. Amen. Amen. Be it done unto me according to your word. Now, how do we get born again? We believed in our heart, and we confessed with our mouth. For if a man believes with their heart and confesses with mouth, it shall be made unto them salvation. So what she did is instead of getting saved, she brought the Savior by believing in her heart and confessing with her mouth. Very powerful. So next time you want to curse somebody who just pulled in front of you on the freeway, maybe your words of your mouth should be more respectable. <laughs> Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, Doc says my feet, my foot sealing up really good. I'm really excited. And my, uh, <clears throat> the neuropathy, not the, the uh, circulation doctor, what's that called there? Yeah, one of those. <laughs> He said, I don't want to see you for a year, so I want to thank God in front of you that he's taking good care of me, and I appreciate it. So I'll be running with the, the best here coming up. All right, amen. So again, one more time, Merry Christmas, and may your new year be very, very blessed. Be calculated, amen? All right, so okay, for unto us a child was born, and unto us a son was given. Amen. And so we need to understand, with that understanding, God had a great big task to do. 
When God first started off, he gave Moses a vision. Remember Moses went up into the mountain? What did Moses see? He saw a bush that was burning but not consumed. What he was looking at briefly is he was looking at God in all of his creation. I'm a firm believer that when Moses went up there, he saw God and his plan. Now, didn't Jesus say, I am the vine and you are the? Branches. What did Moses see? A burning bush with many? Yeah, now you're getting the idea. So when Moses glimpsed, it was just briefly, he says, yeah, I can't stand it. I had to remember, he had to turn, take off his shoes and all. He was looking at God's creation before the fall of anyone. Everything, when God first cre created everything, it was all alive. There was no sin. There was no darkness. Now, let me ask you, this is a Christmas message. Believe it, it is. Who was the first branch that broke away from God? Can you tell me? He's the one that invented sin. Satan did. So when Moses was looking at all that, he was not seeing the fall of Lucifer. He was not seeing anything. He was seeing the plan of God. And I'm convinced for you and I, when those, <clears throat> those people came, the shepherds, and they came to meet baby Jesus, they were seeing the plan of God. In Mary's arms, Mary, did you know? There's the plan of God. Now, do you believe, I do, <clears throat> that he was well protected all through his young life? There are some books out there, don't read them, it's not worth, they're called the mystery books of the Bible. No. Let's talk about Jesus when he was a kid, the magic things that he could do, all a bunch of hogwash. Because no one was to know Jesus until he entered his ministry when John the Baptist baptized him. Hello. Now, there was one occasion, remember, that, that his parents, Joseph and Mary, said, where's Jesus? And they had to go find him, and he was preaching to the, the religious people. And he says, where you been? And he says, I must be about my father's business. So you remember all those things, right? <coughs> now, amen. And so when everybody asks Scott, what are you doing? He says, I must be about my father's business. <laughs> he was about, just before he was about 12, just before his bar mitzvah. Now, if you don't know anything about Jewish traditions, when a child gets to the age of accountability around 12, they have, they throw him a party to honor his bar mitzvah, that he's become an adult. Now, that's pretty young. <laughs> Some of the kids nowadays, they're 35 and they're still living at home. Please don't throw anything at me, okay? I would periodically come back to my home. And my dad says, hey, look who drove in. <laughs> Hello, just kidding you. I love my parents, they're, they're wonderful. I had good parents, okay? Now you with me, okay? So here's this baby Jesus, bless God, and yet he's the creator of all things. So let's give you the story real quick. God created man in his own image after his own likeness. Why? We're gonna infer you. Because to have a relationship, to have fellowship with him. So that man, out of his own free will, would want to respond to God. Amen. So we know what happened. We can't tell you how long it was, but we know what happened. Satan got into the garden. Now let me ask you this. Being as we're having some fun Christmas things, how did Satan get into the garden? Don't holler it out. Good to see it, sis. Adam was asleep because God told him to keep the garden from all intruders and from everything that is not right. From everything, right? 
But he allowed the devil to go in and talk to his wife. Trouble. And we found out that what had happened is after they fell, the whole entire earth was given over to the enemy. Now this is the miracle of the birth of Christ. The entire world was sealed off from God. Now if you can imagine this, no, originally it still belongs to God. But remember God gave it to Adam, right? He gave the world over Adam, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Who did Adam give it to? He turned it over to, the, to Satan. Do you think Satan wants God on this planet? No. And so if you read the account in Genesis chapter 3, it says to Adam, God speaking to Adam, it says, because you've listened to the voice of your wife, Cursed be the ground for thy sake. Hello? And we see, reading chapter 3 of Genesis, how God laid out all the curses. And then one place, he says something really different. He said it would be the seed of a woman that would bruise your head. Now he's talking to the devil. And it says, and you will chase his heel. So we can see through all the scripture, even the time of Moses, how Satan was thought there were different messiahs coming to slap his face and smash his life. And so every time God would do something, Satan would attack it, thinking that this is the coming messiah. And you can see it all through the historic of the Bible, how that Satan's hunting the salvation in the Son of Jesus Christ, our Messiah. And we can see it during Jesus' time too, how Herod chose to have these children killed. I mean, who would kill children? Our nation needs to stop. I know you don't sign up for it. Amen. And so... The story goes, the earth was sealed off by Satan and his group. But God is being God, and even though the planet ultimately belongs to him, he leased it to Adam, and Adam subleased it to Lucifer, or Satan. And Satan sealed it off. But God said in Genesis 3, verse 15, it would be the seed of a woman that would crush your head. So immediately, Satan is looking. How is the enemy, how is God going to get in this planet? Now let me ask you, how did God get his son into this planet? Don't rush off with an answer. Because this is one of the mysteries of godliness. He prophesied him into the planet. Genesis 3.15 would be the seed of a woman. First prophecy. And all through history, the men and women of God were setting up the coming of the Messiah and didn't even know it. Abraham was required of God to give his only son. As a requirement that if he's willing to do that, God's willing to give his only begotten son saw the faithfulness of men who believed in God and honored Abraham, and it was accounted to him for righteousness' sake. Can you say amen? I get excited about all this. And so, God began through the mouths of the prophet, you'll find this in Hebrews chapter 1, through the prophets, he began to speak his son into the planet. And as he, people spoke the word... Let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, there's the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not become the Son until he was born in the planet. There's a, not a mother and father God up there making baby gods. This is not Mormonism. Hello. 
So he became the only begotten of the Father when he was born in the earth. Can you say amen? Let me give you a scripture. And the word became and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. That of the only begotten of our Father. So guess what? The word, which is Christ, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, God the Father had Jesus speak himself into the planet through the mouths of prophets and people who believed in God. It says in the, in the former times, God had spoken to the people through the mouth of his prophets. Scripture says he, God reveals nothing unless he first reveals it to his prophets. So in the Old Testament, he didn't have a written word of God. It wasn't until Moses that we had the law. So those were prophetic words talking about a coming Messiah. Hello. And did you know you can't fight words? And God says, look at Satan. It's over with. Genesis 3.15. Are you with me? So we thought we'd celebrate Christmas time. And we know that Christmas time is a love celebration of the birth of Christ. Some people, they give each other gifts. Some people like to plant trees in their living room. <laughs> Live ones sometimes too. And everyone says, well, you know, the planting of the tree, isn't that a pagan thing? It just shows you how much you know. In Jeremiah, it says that in the sign of a covenant, the sign of having a covenant with God is the planting of a tree. Hello. The exchanging of a gift. The exchangement of the name. Hello. And we taught you about the covenant. Can you still remember about the covenant? How that when we lift up Jesus Christ, the Father says, I will honor the covenant. And you just begin to pray. And the Father answers your prayer. Whatever you ask in my name, he shall do it. Are you still with me? So unto us a child was born, a son was given. So let's look at it, this thing. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 9, please. It's very important that we not forget the meaning of Christmas. Christ Mass. A celebration and an honoring of Christ. And it should be all year long. Amen. In other words, some people celebrate Christmas for a month. Some, like the world celebrates Christmas right after Halloween. No, I'm just joking. But I think Christ should be celebrated by believers every day of the year. It says for us that the, in the Old Testament, God gave types and shadows to remind us of the coming of Messiah. Now that Messiah has come, we have to be reminding ourselves that we can walk with him every day of our life. You got it? Listen to this scripture. Text Isaiah chapter 9, 6 and 7 says, For unto us a child was born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. Now, there are two kingdoms existing right now, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. In the kingdom of light, there will be no end. It came when Jesus was born, and it was fulfilled when Jesus rose from the dead. And there's a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, cannot be hindered. And if we choose to walk with the Lord, and choose to make him our Lord and Savior, and learn about what he's provided, we have an absolute strong tower that we dwell in. We dwell into the temple of the Lord. We've come to Mount Zion, a place that cannot be shaken. 
But we have to remind ourselves of who we are in Christ and not who we were in the world. Say amen. A child was given, a child was born and a son was given. So Jesus was born for the purpose of dying for you and I. The whole purpose. The word became flesh so that he could have a body to receive our sin and our sickness and our sorrows. Isaiah 53 says, we did esteem him, stricken and smitten of God, yet he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. And we all look at him and say he has no calmliness. Yet the Father laid on him the iniquity of us all. So Jesus bore that away. Think about it. You have to become the word. You have to take on flesh. You have to be in your mother's womb for nine months. Then you have to be a child protected by angels until you reach the age of accountability. Then your bar mitzvah is celebrated. Then you get to share a little bit. And then it's not until you're 33 years old that you enter into your ministry. And it's not for only three and a half years. Knowing all that, Jesus came. That's the beauty of it. A child was born for the strict reason of taking our sins, taking our sorrows. Why should we carry him around if he took them? Are you with me? And that the father would be willing to give his son up for the purpose of gaining a family. Jesus said, for the joy that was set before me, I endured the cross, despising the shame, and I have sat down at the right hand of my Father, which is on high. And he's sitting there praying for you and I. Praying for Peggy, praying for Sherry, praying for Chauncey, just laying it out. Lord, bless them, keep them. And our focus is to keep ourselves refreshed with God, first thing, so that we can maintain that focus throughout the day. Say amen, somebody. Okay, the phrase unto us a child is born is legal entry into the world or into the earth. Unto us a child was born, legal entry. You see, if you're not born in this planet, you have no say in this planet. Let me ask you, was Satan born in this planet? No, no but Adam was created and placed in this planet and he stole Adam's authority, didn't he? We see in the temptations of Christ when, when, when Satan confronts Jesus and says, look, all these nations of the earth, I'll give you if you just fall down and you worship me. Because all these nations were delivered unto me, Satan said. Who delivered all those nations unto him? Adam did. That's why Jesus is called the last Adam. Because he cleaned up the mess of the first Adam, and the rest, we must volunteer. Salvation is for everyone that would believe, but it's not until we recognize we need to be saved, and finally ask God, come into our hearts and forgive us and make peace with God, that we actually are saved, yet Jesus died for the whole world. And that's why he gave us the commission to go to everyone and share, would you like to receive this salvation? Wouldn't you like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That is our first commission. You'll find out if you never share your faith with anybody, your Christianity will get stale. And then you'll start to try other things, and, and then the enemy works us back into the world. Oh, go ahead, you can do that. You can just go ahead and compromise here. No, you can't. You're like the battery in your car. How many here, ladies? We're, how many know you have a battery in your car? What's on the battery? A positive and negative pull, right? What happens when you cross them? You're going to get sparks, but you're going to get a dead battery. 
And this is what the enemy tries to do. He tries to get you to live for God in the negative realm of your flesh so that you neutralize anything you get in prayer. So that's why we as Christians, we need to really find out how to function with God so we don't mess up in God. Hello? There's a lot of Christians out there that think following God is real hard. It's not hard at all. It just deals with surrender. Surrender every day. Say, Lord, it's your day, God. I'm glad I woke up in you, and I gl I'm glad I woke up with you. Now, God, it's an adventure. Let's walk through this day. You see, that's how you're doing it. You're not walking through the day whistling for God to come join you when you need some help. <laughs> Are you with me? So, a child was born, deals with legal entry. God, whose God, was not born in this planet. And then, it says that it would be a seed of a woman. Let me ask you, ladies, who carries the seed, the man or the woman? The man does. Yet God said it would be the seed of a woman, which lets us know the virgin birth. The seed was the word. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Amen. So, and the phrase unto us a son is given deals with the last sacrifice that we'll ever need for our sin. Hello, aren't you glad you don't have to borrow the, your neighbor's cat, sacrifice it just so you can have a conversation with God? I'm sure your neighbors would appreciate you not doing that. Hello, amen. And you know, it's kind of funny because if you don't think this planet, Satan really thinks this planet still is. And everything that he does, he requires human sacrifice. Aztecs, and Incas, all of these old things that we find and we keep getting history on, all of those were run by Satan. Always got a serpent on everything. You ever notice that? And always requiring human sacrifice. Just as a mockery to God. But you know, God doesn't require for us to have a human sacrifice. He requires us to surrender and accept His Son. The last sacrifice for a family of believers. Can you say amen? Go with me to Hebrews chapter 10. He came in the volume of the book. Remember I said God had to prophesy the Messiah into the planet. Satan had sealed it off. So God couldn't just bring his armies in. Well, he could. And trop the whole thing because he would be breaking all kinds of principles. And God does not break his own character nor his own principles to get something done. Why? Because he'd stop being God. If God lied, what would you think of him? If God told you one thing and didn't do it, what would you think of him? God is perfect. He never makes a mistake. Never will concerning you. God is never late. He's never early. He's always perfect. Anything that suggests that he's not, you know where that comes from. Hello. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. You see, that little man who wanted his child delivered, he cried out to Jesus, says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. There's a part of me that just wants to doubt all the time. We all have that. It's our flesh. But aren't you glad we don't walk in our flesh? We walk in our spirit. Amen. Because Jesus lives in our heart. All right, listen to this. He came in the volume of the book, Hebrews 10, starting with verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, being born as a little boy, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Now listen to this next phrase. But a body you have prepared for me. Jesus' body was for one reason. To take our sin and our sicknesses. Someone say amen. amen. That's why he says this world isn't my home. Hello. Satan comes but he can find nothing in me. 
Hello, are you with me? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And he says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, I have, behold, I have come in the volume of the book which is written of me to do your will, O God. And by that will we have seen or been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So here's Jesus, the infant, knowing in his heart he's going to take his body and nail it, get it nailed on a tree. Wow. And then it says, for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. Are you still with me? So he came in the volume of the book, Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between your, the woman and your seed and her seed. Galatians 3.16, listen to this one. Now to Abraham and his seed, not to seeds as many, but seeds as Jesus Christ. So let me read it to you again. It says, now Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He did not say and to seeds as many, but as of one and to your seed, which is Jesus Christ. Now over in 1 John, it tells us in two places, because the seed lives in us, it won't allow us to practice sin. Did you know it says that? Because Jesus who came as a seed, and the word became flesh, in our heart, if we listen to our heart, our spirit, will check us every time we're about ready to do something wrong. It will tell you every time. It will let you know if you're listening. If you're not really into doing your own thing, and I'm not talking about simple way, just into, you got to get her done, you know, you're not listening to God. God will tell you every time when you're about ready to do an accident or get hurt or maybe he will say don't go for a drive for a half an hour. How are we ever going to get to a place of hearing him guiding us this way if we don't spend time with him and let him know he's first. Say amen somebody. Amen. Jesus was prophesied into the earth. Listen to this, Genesis 3.15, the seed of a woman. Micah 5.2, the word becoming flesh. Now we haven't got to the good part yet, so we're just kind of going through this. But it says, but you, Bethlehem, Euphrata, this is what Micah 5.2 says. Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me. One to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. Who's he talking about? Jesus Christ, the King. So how is Jesus getting into this earth? He's being prophesied into the earth. Why? Because in the beginning, he was the Word. Hello. And the Word became flesh through the prophecies of men and women as they heard from God and spoke as God gave them utterance. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness that the man of God or woman of God be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. That's you. Glory to God. Amen. It goes on further in Isaiah 7, 14. Listen to this. God with us, legal entry. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? God with us. Four revelations you need to be real secure on. Number one, God is for you. Hello? He's for you. But what if I do something wrong? He's still for you. He knows you're not that something wrong. He knows that you want to be good. So if God be for us, who can be? 
Emmanuel. The second thing is God's with us. He came into the earth. Can you say amen? At Pentecost, he dwells in the molecules of the air you breathe. The only way you can tap into that source, though, is you have to have Jesus in your heart. Because there's plenty of people running around who, who know there's a God, but has never accepted God into their heart. So they're like a walking void, emptiness. And yet God's right here. Don't tell me about God. I don't want to hear about God. Don't tell me about God until they drive themselves to the face or until they die. Tell us about God, please. He's the only Savior we have. He's the only shepherd that leads us out. My sheep will hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they shall not follow. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Isn't that wonderful? Prophesied hundreds of years before Christ. Here's another one. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. We read this before. For unto us a child was born. Notice it says, unto us. Okay. And then unto us a son was given. The government will be upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, <coughs> excuse me, there shall be no end. All right, go with me to John chapter 10, please. God has to be born legally in the planet in order to have say. Did you know you have say in this planet? Satan wasn't born here. He didn't have any say until he stole his authority from Adam. Now he runs around here like some little God telling everybody what they should be doing, what to fear and all this. And he's starting diseases, having men make weapons. Think about our planet. This is what would be fun for you. Just a little Christmas gift. A lot of people say, well, Pastor Kerry, do you think that there's life on other planets? I would say yes, because heaven's a planet, and earth was made from heaven as a model, model after it. But whether there is or there isn't, I'll tell you one thing that God is not going to allow. We are not being visited by other godly creatures out there in the universe coming to visit our planet. Hello. That like being an ant wanting to come to see New York. And here's why I believe this is my conviction now. This is a conviction, not because this planet is filled with people. All they know to do is hate one another, start wars, steal, kill. And destroy. Do you think you want one of your creatures out there that doesn't have a double problem in the earth wanting to visit an earth that has a double problem in it? No, not in your right mind. God is not going to be sending people that he's created. Remember, God made everything. So if there is other creatures out on other planets, they're going to look just like us. And they're made from God's image. Can you say Amen. God's not going to want them infected from what we're exposed to. Hello. As long as we know it, our world has been ravaged by war and killing and fighting and murdering. Do you think you want your, your wonderful creatures, if you did make them and if they do exist out there, to come visit a planet like that? No, we are quarantined, folks. This planet's been quarantined ever since Satan took the authority from Adam. And God came to release us from this quarantine. I think you can understand that with the COVID thing going on. And Satan is trying to hold a lot of people, loved ones that you have in your family, in bondage through ignorance. 
And yet you have the word of God and the good news and almighty God lives on the inside of you. This is the meaning of Christmas. To give out the best gift. So whether you think it or not, God is not going to have a bunch of his innocent creatures coming with whatever into this earth just so they could be polluted, shot at, being bombed, or blew up. You're all looking at me like I've gone off the deep end. This is, this is for fun I'm sharing this with you. So, no, we're not being visited. These things that are flying around, and they are flying around, our government has finally said they are. Now remember, this is a Christmas message, so don't freak out on me, okay? They say something's flying around, and they're defying everything that we can ever think of, or what's commonly known to man. But guess what? They, our government, might not know what they are, but our Bible tells us. And these are Lucifer's little creatures. And they took a bunch of God's equipment way back in the formation of this world and hid it away. And now what we see going around in here and flying around are manifestations of Satan and his group to draw the world into another gospel. One of the first other gospels that came was Darwinism. Huh? And what came before that was reincarnation. These are all Satan's lies to get us to get, get our eyes off of the one who's going to rescue us off this planet. Now, folks, we're not going to stay on this planet. The Bible tells us, tells us that God's going to take us home for seven years until he redoes the planet. The planet's never ever going to be totally destroyed. It's going to be renovated by fire. It's going to be re-altered on its right axis, moved back into the plan of God, and you and I will reign and rule with Jesus Christ for eternity off of this planet and able to go anywhere we want. But meanwhile, there is a spiritual outlaw in this planet, and his job is to mess up the human beings that are here, and the Christians, how dare those Christians tell everybody they can be saved. That's the only hope we have. So, no, this planet is full of people who are listening to the wrong God, that full of hate. I mean, can you imagine renouncing a family member because you don't agree with what they do? I mean, I've heard people say, I divorce you as my family member. You're no longer my son. And people, such hate. Who do you think is filling this planet with that? But we belong to another kingdom. And so God was outside the planet he wasn't born in the planet, and so God prophesied it would be the seed of a woman. So you got John 10, John chapter 10. Amen. Phew. That was a lot of, did that bring you up to speed a little? I mean, I haven't lost any of you. I hope I, hope I haven't done. John chapter 10, verse 1. Most assuredly, in other words, guaranteed, I say unto you, he does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Who's the thief and the robber in the Bible? Come on. Shake yourself really good. Satan is. He, he is the thief and the robber. Right? And God's outside the planet, and he has to find a way into the planet, so he prophesies himself in. Right? Mary says, be it done unto me according to your Word and the Word took on flesh in her womb and nine months later was born. Now, he who comes into the sheepfold but by the door but is the shepherd of the sheep, it's going to say. But he who tries to climb up some other way is a thief and a robber. So we know the thief and the robber is the devil. And he took his authority from Adam. 
So Satan was not born into this world. So he's talking about natural born in this planet. He that comes in this planet some other way, other than being born here, through the door, is a thief and a robber. He just described the devil. The devil took his authority from Adam. The devil wasn't born, he was created. And so now he runs about in this planet on Adam's authority, and it isn't until you and I use the authority of Jesus Christ that we stop him right in his tracks. He can't fight Jesus who lives in us. He can't fight the wisdom of God who dwells in us. But the problem is, a lot of times we're functioning from ourself, and we're not functioning from the Spirit of the Lord in us. And we have to be trained, and we have to be taught how to do that. Say amen. So, a child was born, so natural birth. He that comes in by the door, but climbs up some other ways, a thief and robber. But he who enters by the door, natural birth, is the shepherd of the sheep. Jesus had to be born here in order for him to have any say here. He had to be born under all this adversity, murdering of children. I mean, there were, I mean, the earth was far more corrupt than we see today. Unless you live in a third world country somewhere where you're off in some kind of pagan land. Hello, sex with animals in the street. I mean, taking somebody's wife and killing the person and just had a whim. Terribly corrupt. And we don't see that because we live in America. We're pretty protected. But here recently, I'd say over the year and a half, we've seen pretty weird things, haven't we? Weren't you surprised when you saw all these things? Yeah. But yet, Scripture warns us, these things are coming upon the earth. You get with me so I can lead you out lead you out of this are you with me nobody fell asleep on me yet okay good <laughs> listen to this in John chapter 1 1 and 2 says in the beginning was the okay it didn't say in the beginning was the son of God did it didn't say in the beginning was the begotten of God, did it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. See, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And the Word was God. See, the Father thought it, the Word spoke it, and the Holy Spirit brought it to pass. That's how it works. The Father calls. The Holy Spirit draws. And Jesus saves. They all three work together. Are you still with me? So in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word, He was with God in the beginning. Drop down to verse 14. And the Word became flesh, and it dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. When was the Word begotten? When was the word begotten? When Jesus was born in the earth. Hello? See, the new age, the new age people, they just throw everything together in a pot. They'll say, well, there was a mama, there's a mama God up there, and there's a papa God, our father God. And you don't hear about mama God, but they got together and produced a begotten God. No, that's all New Age teaching. That's man's explanation of what they spiritually don't understand. Hello? Lean not to your own understanding. No. There was the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And the Word says, I'll go, Father. Father says, we have to go. And so the Word was prophesied into the earth. That's the miracle. And it was built. And every time Satan did something, God would do something over here. And every time Satan did do something, God would do something right over there. Right underneath his eyes, right in the middle of everything. Satan is chasing all this stuff all around, and God's just laughing. Because it would be a child being born that will literally sentence Satan to hell. 
That's why we celebrate Christmas. It's not baby Jesus. It's the package. The package of our salvation in the body of a little child that was nurtured and protected till he reached the age of accountability. And then he was received in Jewish tradition. And then when he turned 33, boom, right? He got baptized. Whoops, 30 and then three and a half years later. All right, you still with me? And the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. All right? Now, let's look at the miracle. Go with me to Luke chapter 1 and we'll finish with you. The Christmas story. Uh, anybody learn anything new today? If not, you just know it all and I'll come to your church. <laughs> Amen. Luke 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Jesus, by the way, was a Nazareth, wasn't he? Do you know what the Nazareth Cree says to do? Number one, if you ever see pictures of Jesus with short hair, that's not real Jesus. Jesus had long hair right to his shoulders, about like Peggy's, about like Linda's over here, about like uh, Diana's. Nazareth people, it was against their covenant to cut their hair. Remember Samson? He was the first Nazarene. So Jesus had long, beautiful hair. Hello. Amen. Not only that, but Jesus didn't drink wine. But he was friends of wine bibbers and, and sinners, yeah. Who do you think needs to be saved? But Jesus didn't drink booze. Oh, yes, he did. He drank wine. Wine, the term wine means everything from grape juice to wine. And in between, that means vinegar, too. My mom made wine. So I, by observing her and doing things I shouldn't that I'm repented of, I understand that wine turns from grapes... Gets sugar, a little yeast in there, and then it begins to ferment. Now, here's what you don't know. Remember the, the wedding of Canaan? Okay? And then what did Jesus do? He turned the water into wine. And, and then the, the guy got upset. He says, you saved the best wine for last. So I asked God, you know what God showed me? He says, take some time. You can do this. Take some grape juice, put it in a glass, and leave it sit out. When the grape juice that was, you just poured is the best wine. That's what Jesus made, the grape juice that ha didn't sit out. Now, the wine that the people in the wedding were drinking is grape juice that sat out because they don't have refrigerators back then. Now, the grape juice sat out. So if the grape juice sat out one day, it starts to foam. If it sits out two days, it starts to bubble. If it sits out three days, it starts to fizz. That's called the bad wine. Say, say, I'm learning something new. It's the bad wine. So when the owner said, you see, we drank all the bad stuff that had the fizz and the bubbles, it was close to vinegar, and you bring us this fresh stuff. So they're not talking about booze. You see, you'd have to be kind of dumb to justify. In fact, people will say, oh, yeah, Jesus, he had a few glasses of wine. That's only because they want to drink. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I'm not mad at him because they want to have a glass of wine or something. Neither will I condemn it. But you'll find out. Go ahead and lift up that big glass and say, God, I just want to love you and see how you feel when you do that. You'll feel the Holy Spirit go, Bleh. I want you celebrating in your love for me and not in something that's going to make you three sheets to the wind. Think about one more thing. I know I got off on a bunny trail. It's Christmas time. So this is Christmas. 
every time of year. I bruise my head and I wreck my car. Police stop my car. The police stop my car. The police stop my car. They opened my trunk. I didn't go very far. <laughs> anyway, I love Christmas time. So, when Jesus sat with the wine bibbers, you have a choice to drink grape juice or not anything at all. And if you've ever been to Germany, and I have, water over in Germany you don't drink. It's awful. You don't drink it out of the tap. You have to have bottled water. And so most of the people back 20, 30 years ago when they didn't have a lot of bottled water would drink beer and give it to their kids. You know, and they would just do that. So traditions, we're not trying to do anything, but with traditions, Satan engrafts into religion and traditions of man in this planet things that will short out your battery. Going back to the battery. So we do not want to cross the poles. If you're a Ghostbuster, don't cross the stream. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay, so, so the Gabriel sent forth the word of God to a city named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored of God. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Could you imagine this seven foot tall giant just saying, Behold! <laughs> I've been good. <coughs> I put my toys away. Are you still with me? But when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying and considered what manner of salutation or greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, having that I know not a man? Remember, this girl was only about 13 years old. Okay? I know not a man. And then, uh, I like this next part. I lost my place here. And the Holy Spirit, he says, Then Mary said, to the angel, how can I know not a man? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. And there also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And then Mary said, remember we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth. Then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. Guess what? Boom! The miracle of the seed was planted in her womb. Isn't that glorious? All right, let's finish up with you. A couple of points. Number one, unto us a child was born. We were given Jesus to redeem us from a curse. Everyone say the curse of the law is threefold. So if you can't fulfill the law, these curses will come upon you. Thank God we're not Jewish. But the curse of the law is in the earth. So the curse of the law is poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Everyone say that with me. Poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. So if Jesus came to redeem or to get us out of the curse, he came to get us out of poverty, out of sickness, and out of spiritual death. Can you say amen? And we do that by meeting with him and walking with him throughout the day. We're spiritually alive and not dead. 
Our flesh has been pulverized. We wear our flesh like a jacket, but that's all it does. It doesn't give us advice. Hey, jacket, what's the weather going to be like today? And that's how we've been for all our life until we met Jesus. We've been consulting the jacket and other people's jackets. Looking for wisdom. Hello. And yet we discovered it in Jesus, right? So Jesus was born to redeem you and I from the curse of the law. Poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. He came also and to do and, and to set us up by his word. The word became flesh in Mary's womb and still is taking on flesh. Now, the word went into our womb, right? And we know for nine months it's building a body. That body is going to be sacrificed. But did you know that the word is still taking on flesh? It's taking on Sherry. It's taking on Joe. It's taking on Seth. See, we're accepting Jesus is the word. And he's building a body in the earth. Hello. There's Sherry. There's Scott. And God is building a body in the earth. In the womb of the earth. And one day, God's going to say, Okay, kids! And a trumpet's going to sound, and the dead in Christ are going to rise, and we which will remain and are alive until the coming of the Lord will be caught up to meet him in the air. So a body is being built in the earth right now. You share the word. He shares the word. You share the word. And as we share the word that God loves them, he's not mad at them, he wants to be in their hearts, he wants to save them, another part of that body is being built in the earth. And then one day, God's going to say, kids, come on home. I mean, that could be this afternoon. Hello. So you are a part worldwide of a giant body of Christ that's being built by the Holy Spirit and the will of God in the earth. You are a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar purchased people. You have the blood of Christ on you. You have the Spirit of God in you. You have the wisdom of God at your accessibility. You are ready to go. Now, Make sure your focus stays on Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? Now you got a better idea what Christmas really means. If you got something out of that, will you give the Lord praise? All right. Kept you a couple minutes.